Chrome. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, one Fresh. one shot. What is this called? It's called Grimbergen. Grimbergen. G R I M B E R G E N. Um, it says Bière Forte, Cerveza Extra. Where is it from exactly? Great question. Um, oh, uh, I couldn't say for few. sure. It doesn't. It doesn't tell you. But I mean, um, the, if, hmm. It also is in Spanish, so maybe it's a Spanish wine. France. Or it's a French wine it's that French just beer. has Spanish and English. Interesting. This is new. What is new? I've never, no, I've never had oh, this Oh, the beer. Before. Yes, the beer is new. Yes. Or uh, Brussels, cool. maybe, actually. Grimbergen Alley in Brussels. So it's in that area. To European. Ooh, it's also really good. It is good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not surprised. If it is Brussels, I'm not surprised that it's good. Because um, when I did my Europe trip last summer... Mm -hmm. the I mean our first stop was in Brussels and I still think I mean as much as there was good beer everywhere we went the best beer we had was in Brussels on probably on our first night there so it was like we hit our peak immediately but yeah Brussels is known for their beer yeah I only ever did Brussels for honestly an afternoon mm -hmm. uh, high school graduation trip that like so many cities in three weeks Okay. Brussels was kind of a stop over on the bus from A to B. I, I geographically challenged here. Can't tell you where we were going, where that's we were right. from. Someone will correct me in the comments because that's what comments are for. Hooray. Um, Brussels is a small city, though. It's like you can do it in a day. It's, it it's a small nice. city, but a very beautiful city. So I definitely oh, no, I got like two minutes, but it was gorgeous. That's it. If you haven't been to Brussels, take a day. Go to Brussels as part of a bigger trip. Yeah, so it's like just to fly all the way to Brussels, spend the afternoon, go, this was lovely, and fly home. Yeah, yeah, just take a, I mean, we can't, I mean, you know, we, we have one friend who can do that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, uh, if you're doing a Euro trip in, like, continental Western Europe, uh, take a day in Brussels. It's, it's worth it. You won't regret it. If you like beer, chocolate, and waffles, and french fries, and I had, history. I did have all those things while I was there, at least, so mm -hmm. make good use of the trip. Or was, comics. They have a great comic book. Yeah, apparently I didn't know that when I was there, and I'm now yeah. really upset I missed out on this. Tintin is uh, Belgian. Yeah, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. and, and I, there's I, a couple others. I, I will have to go back one day. Yeah, apparently they have a great will, museum for comics. Yeah, Tons of comic Graffiti stuff. all over the city also is comic uh, related. I wasn't huge into it, but I thought it was cool. I didn't know Tintin was uh, Belgian until I was there. Yeah. Actually, just the way the last weekend I went to Toronto, just got back uh, mm -hmm. two days ago. Uh, again, a city with great street art. Yes, that is uh, what I noticed. I'll be yeah. there in a month, so. So those of you who know there, watch out. The Waxman's coming. Yeah, beware. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I think, well, I think they know. Actually, no, I haven't told some of them. Uh, I think we mentioned a few of them that you were coming. We have mostly friends in common there. Yeah, so they'll know. And I told them to listen to the podcast. They better. <laughs> you'll, you'll check. I will, I will check when I'm there. I, I met you the other night with my brother. I meant to take his phone from it, add our podcast to it without him noticing just to see if he listened to it. I'm subscribed. Yeah, uh, as am I. As am I. Now that we're officially up on iTunes. Exciting yes. news. It is exciting news. Mm -hmm. And that way we can actually, um, we have a place where everyone can find our podcasts. We can even, you know, people can leave ratings. It's really exciting. Yeah, eventually we'd like to see some ratings on there. Yeah. I might write one just to test it out. Even bad ones, you know, we, we learn from our uh, our critics, right? I think mine will be a positive review, just, you know, bias. Yeah, you yeah, know, this is the best. It's <laughs> uh, fantastic. They sound handsome and, and interesting and cool. And Would sleep right. with either of them, 10 on 10. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What was it, 5 on 7? That's stupid. Oh, yeah, 5 story. out of 7. 5 out of score. 7. Perfect score. <laughs> Oh, internet stupidity. Internet stupidity. Uh, I was going to say that in Toronto, I actually had a really fun experience. I ended up chatting with uh, one of the street artists I follow there. Um, goes by the name of Lovebot. Okay. I don't know if you're leaving. <laughs> I was going to show Ryan somewhere in the room. I have one of his pieces up, but I can't find it right now. I must have hid it somewhere. I'm going to pretend I've seen it. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I, like, very impressive um, art style. I, I really appreciate how it's there. It's <laughs> I'll show you later, actually, though. Okay. Um, but he has tons of stuff around in Toronto, a few pieces pieces here in Montreal I've spotted. And I just, I didn't see any of his work when I was there, just nothing lined up with where we were when we were. Mm -hmm. But we were chatting back and forth and trying to meet up. He's actually headed to Montreal for Mural Fest, which is a thing happening in a month or so. 
That's cool. That might be something worth checking out. Like, yeah, and, uh, I went last year with Paula, and it was pretty cool just seeing a bunch of artists doing like crazy stuff. One guy was painting an entire old STM bus. Oh, wow. It was a really interesting little uh, thing, but apparently he's going to be there, and we said we'd meet up for breakfast. Ah, that's that's nice. Looking forward to having breakfast with an artist I admire. Yeah, street art is one of those things that you sort of walk by. I mean, listen, a guy just tagging his name, you can maybe call that street art, but definitely... Some of the pieces that you see, uh, like I was walking near Hochelaga Maisonneuve, mm-hmm. that area, and I just saw a really cool steam engine graffiti or street art. Mm. And that is something you just take a picture of because it's like, it's cool, it's it's interesting, it's not just a guy writing his name. And that's it. Like, I, I mean, and again, I am another artist who I've seen in Montreal whose work I'd like is uh, 5-8 art. A lot of his will just be his name or his brand. But done in like insanely cool styles, like really, like he actually done a few where they actually look like they're laid up neon signs, even though they're just paintings. Mm-hmm. And again, it's just a signature, but it's also a piece of art to that point. It's not just the single can black spray paint lines. Oh, but it's been something. It's cool. I mean, listen, legality, whatever. I mean, usually the guys doing official pieces are licensed by the city or by the building owner or by something like that. That's cool. I mean, I was driving down like rural Quebec uh, this weekend, and what pissed me off so much is that you have these like natural, naturally occurring rocks, right? And people go like you know Joe and Catherine forever, and like they they do graffiti on the rock. Like, don't do it on nature. Leave nature be. That's it. Like I've always said, I love when they do them like under overpasses. So you're driving on a highway and you catch the overpasses, the columns holding it up, and mm-hmm. you've got these like. Great pieces. I know there's one in Montreal, again, geographically challenged. I forget where it is. Uh, where guys done Gur from Invader Zim. Hmm. I just thought... That, I mean, yes. That's character I, I love from my childhood, and it's a really well done piece. Yes. Uh, Lovebot actually had one uh, under one of the overpasses, but they recently were doing some renovations and took down all the art, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you get the occasional ones, too, along the highway kind of stuff. Spots where, you know, they shouldn't have been done because it's, you know, public property. But then again, Montreal's also great for some of the huge murals around uh, um, uh, Lena Gru. Yes. A few big ones up there. Very yeah. nice stuff. No, you find some really nice ones. So, Mural Fest might be worth it. I've never been to one. I'll keep, I'll double check when the dates are and we'll figure it out and take a day and go see it. Watch, I'm going to be in Toronto that weekend. <laughs> hey, I might be back to Toronto that weekend. That's yeah, true. It was, a, it was a very fun getaway. We actually had one of the weirdest. So. On the way to Toronto was me, uh, the missus, and our buddy Kevin. Yes. Uh, whose girlfriend also lives there, so he was going to go stay with her for a day or two while we went up to visit a few of our friends, old coworkers and such. Yes. And listen to a podcast, another one I really enjoy, called How Did This Get Made? Hmm. And uh, it's a few different celebrities. I know uh, Paul Shear, who was on The League. Yes. Uh, he plays Rux. Andy? Andre? Andre? Oh, Andre. I think the ball. He does play Andre. Yeah, yeah. yeah, excuse me. Uh, so it's his show, and it's him and a few people. I think we mentioned on the show before at this point. I'm already repeating stuff now. Uh, but they did an episode with Retta, who is um, popular in the show. Um, fucking uh, Parks and Rec. Sorry. Wow. Mm-hmm. Brain, I'm not even drinking yet. My brain's already not here yet. <laughs> We're recording a lot earlier than usual. Like The sun is out. It's strange. It's messing with our uh, inner clocks and our drinking clocks. Yes. So I think... Uh, Changing it up, but that's okay. I kind of I have more energy in the uh, yeah. It's, the yeah I can think better and formulate better word sentence things. I make words great <laughs> when the sun is high in the third trimester. Of the <laughs> third trimester. Yeah, the sun is giving birth to the moon. The sun is. Well, I mean, isn't that what happened? I think in Egyptian culture, maybe no. I mean, in Egyptian culture, the sun is god. Or yeah, wrong. A god. Yeah, wrong. God, god of gods, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I took Egyptian studies. I should know something. Egyptian studies? It was a humanities class in the uh, college. Okay. Hey, Egypt. Cool yes. place. So now that we've done one of our famous tangents, uh, what I was trying to say was the podcast, How Did This Get Made, had Retta on, and they did an episode where they basically take a movie and basically make fun of it and kind of, you know, how did this possibly get made? And the movie they decided to riff on was Spice World. Oh, God. Uh, if I, uh, one, if you don't know, uh, it's a movie starring the Spice Girls that literally makes no sense. To just go over a few brief points, it starts them playing a live show, uh, how they're the biggest band right now, and the real premise is them being nervous 
to perform their first live show, which is happening at a big theater. It's like, but you saw them perform two or three times before that at live shows. And then there's their Asian friend who is pregnant and just so many random plot lines that doesn't make sense. And freaking UFO lands and they meet aliens. The only thing I remember from Spice World, because I did watch it, but this must have been when I was, uh, must have been seven, six even, is at the end with the end credits where they actually like break the fourth wall <laughs> and they're talking and I start laughing and they start laughing at the same time. So I legit thought in my like <laughs> puny six-year-old brain, oh my God, how is this happening? Like, it blew my mind. That how is, are they talking to me? That is pretty brilliant. Yeah. And uh, it, 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 uh, yeah, it was interesting. So our movie night consisted of that movie. Which, looking at it now, is like a zany, crazy, silly movie. And we uh, paired it with Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. One of my personal favorite movies. But watching them next to each other, you realize how silly that movie also is. <laughs> and it was um, a friend of ours, Josh. It was his first time seeing either film. and he was Josh just... has never seen Scott Pilgrim? I was shocked, I, I know. I would have taken him to be like a guy who's seen Scott Pilgrim. Josh, no. if you're listening... I'm a little uh, surprised. I'm learning but something he, about you. I, from what I can tell, enjoyed both movies. I think he enjoyed one more than the other. Obviously, Spice World. Definitely, Clearly. definitely a big Spice World guy. Oh Josh. no, we know. We know. It's just, I mean, his. He, we all know Josh is secretly time spice. Time spice. <laughs> I couldn't think of like T I M E or T H Y M E. Yes, that's the mystery. I mean, I've known Josh for twenty years. I've known him for a long time, but yeah, I always had that feeling. Time Spice. <laughs> he might have been the secret six Spice Girl. The secret six. And like he was like, actually named after a Spice. <laughs> he was actually Time Spice. It's kind of like, I, I, I picture like the Power Rangers classic where it's the five Rangers and the White Ranger comes in or the, the Green Ranger. They always add like the secret sixth Ranger. Yeah. He was the secret Maybe sixth he's a branch secret. off and there's like Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. Like, uh, <laughs> who was it? Paul Simon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. There's so many bad Spice jokes we could be making and I can't even do it. Oh uh, one God. time I was bored at home, mm -hmm. and my mom's spice rack, I rearranged it so it said parsley sage, it was married in time, in order. Uh, I thought it was funny, my mom didn't, because I messed up her flow. Oh. And... and then the, the, the Salisbury steak the night just didn't taste as good? No. I don't even know what a Salisbury steak is. Maybe so. I don't I just... think I've ever eaten it. No. I was going to say roast beef, but I don't know why I went to Salisbury steak. Roast beef. Roast beef. <laughs> uh, I have to do that. All right. Um, what were we talking about? Spice World? Uh, Spice my, World, yes. Um, my dad, your dentist. Yes. Um, One of he, our weird many connections. The only CD he had in his car for a period of time was the Spice Girls CD. So that's how I knew who the Spice Girls were, is from like listening to it in my dad's car on the way to school, on the way home from school, on the way to... You know, things. Of all the CDs your dad could have had, really? Oh, yeah. Spice, uh, whatever the CD was called. Spice, Spice Things. Spice Things. My Spice. favorite album of the Spice Girls. Spice Girls. <laughs> Spice Girls Return. I don't know. <laughs> With their titular song, the one about spices. And then they came back a couple Super Bowls ago. They did a little reunion. Like yeah, that bit. was actually really cool, though. It was exciting. I was excited. I and honestly, very happy to watch that one. Yes. As a man who, as you'll recall, enjoys football watching parties. Mm. <laughs> um, That's a callback. <laughs> callback. Yes, football uh, watching as, parties. Yes, as I, one of those. I'm supposed to go to a basketball watching party oh. later tonight, so... Oh, uh, in, do enjoy. Uh, yeah. oh, I hope yes. the Raptors do Raptors, it? yes. Is it actually a Raptors game? Yeah, and they're playing wow. against LeBron James and uh, Cleveland. I was going to be like, who's Cleveland? Oh, no, they're from Cleveland. <laughs> Grover <laughs> Cleveland and LeBron James <laughs> on the same basketball team. Is, is Grover Cleveland a basketball player? No, he was a president. And he oh, was okay. president twice, but like not consecutive. Oh, okay. Hey, well, uh, a little United States history lesson for you. Who said this podcast was useless? No one. I, I hope no one. I hope no one. Oh, my mom may have said that. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I don't think Joseph's podcast is, and this will be a fun explanation at dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Just kinda, no, Mom, it's like a radio show, but not on the radio. I actually haven't told my parents that I'm doing a podcast. They, But I think, like, they're cool with it. I feel like, I feel like it's weird really have to come out to our parents as podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when you came out to your parents as a podcaster? <laughs> we oh. want to hear your coming out as a podcaster stories. But can you imagine, like, honestly, that's actually kind of an interesting thing. Like, imagine, like, Phil DeFranco, mm -hmm. when he's like, hey, mom, dad, father. Mom, dad, and father? <laughs> does does uh, he I have don't a know. gay dad situation that I don't know about? 
I have two dads. No, no, but um, <laughs> hey, you know, I'm not going to actually get a, a quote unquote real job. I'm going to do YouTube videos. I'm going to make a shit ton of money. But I mean, back then he probably wasn't. What do you hmm. think his parents thought? Like, I mean, it's going to be pretty weird to turn to your parents and say, hey, I'm going to do this thing that makes no sense to someone in your generation, most likely, yeah. and make a living off it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, both of us being Rooster Teeth fans will often yes. hear them talk about like when they go through an airport and get asked, what do you do for a living when they're going for work? And it's like. It's kind of hard to explain. I make content on the web, and then the follow-up question is always answered by, no, not porn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> to me, yeah, like, not that kind of content. Back, that, the, back in the day, that was the only thing that was on the internet. I mean, yeah, 10 years ago, someone said, oh, yeah, I make internet videos. Your assumption is, what ports I do you post them to? And there's so many, you know, can you now. please give me, like, a link? <laughs> or... I think that's a Always Sunny It's an Always Sunny yeah. bit. How dare you post those videos to one of those... Ex-girlfriend websites. There's so many. Which site was it? Can you tell me specifically? Yeah, there's so many of them. Like, which one was it? (laughs) (laughs) But um, no, that's it. It's it's a. It's such a weird. I mean, we talked about this in sort of a bit in the post-secondary education podcast that we Mm -hmm. had, and it's like the the landscape has changed. So coming out as 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 weird as it sounds, coming (laughs) out as a podcaster or as a YouTuber or as even like a. Okay, I still can't really get on board with this as a viner. You know, someone who just makes Vine videos. Your your fame is 15 minutes of fame? No, no, seven seconds of fame is what you get. Well, I mean, again, um, so anyone who may have followed The Amazing Grace, which just wrapped up, I won't spoil anything, of course, because you may have not watched the finale yet. Um, You'll have to let me know after. I'll let you know after what happened. Um, but one of the couples running was Zach King, who does Vines as a, the Magic Vines, the, the really great editing tricks. Fantastic work. But I feel like Vine isn't where he makes the majority of his... He makes his content, posts it all, but he also does video production, YouTube videos, behind the scenes, and does have more content than just the seven-second Vine videos. Yes. Uh, I feel that's what it comes down to. It's really the... The Vine is his hook that grabs you, and it's the other content, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchats, your YouTube video, and the rest of that content that draws you in. Yes. And now he's going to a person who can go on television like The Amazing Race and, you know, get even more fans, a chance of winning a million dollars. I think you spilled your beer for a second. Oh, no, no. I the, the face you gave me. Oh, I'm almost done mine. We're at the same face here. Cool. These are really good, though. Just They're to, excellent. To totally I'm, I'm very legend. happy. That's always exciting when you discover a new beer. You're like, you know, I'm going to try it out. And I took the plunge. I bought six of them. That's, that's a risk. Usually if I'm buying something new, I'll take those like eight packs where it's like two of each of like different flavors kind Tasters. of thing. Taster packs. That's yeah. the that's very the logical like, name for this I thing. really took the plunge here. It's like, mm-hmm. even if I don't like this beer, I bought six of them. I'm going to finish them at some point. I well, can't. I, I, think, I think we can do that together. We will. Mm-hmm. We're going to go there. No, oh, and Paul um, and I, Paul and I did something similar. We were at, but um, it's called the Big Apple. It's just as out of Toronto. Uh, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, my, mom, my mom, whenever, because my mom does a lot of road trips for her business. Whenever she's passing by, she stops and she gets. Yeah, we picked up uh, a six pack of ciders, and it was nice. They like, they had like four or five different kinds. You can build your own six packs. We got That's like awesome. one of each, and then two of the, the most basic ones. Low key, we safe. might we might stop there. But to go back on what you were saying, yes, definitely the social media thing is so huge, and there's so many people I know who are so like, oh, you know, social media it just gives an excuse not to talk to each other. I'm like. Wait a minute. Social media is specifically to talk to ourselves. You know, talk to each other. Talk to ourselves. Talk to ourselves. I don't know. I where mean, I was going some with that. people's twitters <laughs> is uh, basically yelling to avoid. I mean, some people have twitters for their dogs. Yeah, and or their or their like infant children. Hey, can I just go back for a second? Yes. I, I gave it a, a knowing like yeah right there for a second because I do not like those accounts. Usually, I find them a little cheeky. But then again, I know someone um, from the podcast uh, Hello Internet. Okay. He also runs. Oh the, yes, uh, Brady yes. Heron, who also runs Number File. Is it CGP File. Gray? Well, it's CGP Gray and the other guy on the show with him. So Brady, the other guy. Okay. Brady has a Twitter, uh, an Instagram for his dog Audrey, and I legit follow because they are amazing photos of if, his adorable dog. Yeah, if you do it properly, a dog Instagram or a dog Twitter is good. Mm-hmm. But so many people do it, and it's like just tacky and lame and stupid yeah, and whatever. I feel like the Instagram one's a good way to do it because it kind of allows you to post more pictures of a subject that you're you're into without having to sub- force all your followers into it. A uh, co-worker of ours recently just split up her Instagram to two accounts. Fred? 
Fred. I mean, uh, and Ian also does it. Ian does has his own personal Instagram. Oh, he has he his, uh, his business Instagram. And that's it. So rather than following somebody and getting all their like, oh, I'm running a business. Here's my business account. You get their personal stuff. Occasionally some crossover because it is yeah. what they do for a living. Yes. But when it comes to like the more like, hey, here's the behind the scenes, my production, my yes. final products, my commercials, it's a separate account. That's, that's really smart. That's the right thing to do is you really like... And not only is it just less annoying for people in your social circle, but I think you also want a coordinated and streamlined brand presence. You don't want business, 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 then, hey, I got drunk this time. Look at me and my friends drunk. Yeah, you, you don't want you that. You don't want that. Eh. As much as we're evolving and things are becoming more casual in the workplace, like people with tattoos, it's okay. Cat, you know, you're not have to dress in a suit every day. You still don't want your boss or you still don't want your business partners to see pictures of you out partying and doing whatever. It still has a negative connotation. Effect, connotations. Do I necessarily agree with it? No. I don't think you having a good night, you know, a fun night necessarily means you're a bad person to work with, but that is still the reality that we live in. So it's definitely good to keep your business and your personal separate. But I still don't know if I'm on board with making an Instagram account for your dog. Do you need a refill? I would love a refill. Thank you for catching that so quickly. Uh, I'm always, I'm always uh, very observant. And also, sorry that I was hiding the uh, bottle opener from you earlier with my crotch. <laughs> it was, it was not intentional. All good. <laughs> uh, so I figure it's uh, about a good amount of time to uh, maybe delve into uh, what we're here to speak about today. Yeah, I don't need a break. Do you need a break? Not just yet. We'll come back a little later that one if we need to. We might do it. So okay. Well, here. Speaking of which. Hey, name of the show. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about today. Speak, you know, because we're talking about how world, the world evolves and the world evolves. What is the most basic way the world evolves is in the way we speak. Yeah. The way we interact with each other, not just digitally in terms of medium and communication, but in actually what we say. That is a uh, key. Good uh, job, fam. Thanks, bruh. Did I use any of those right? Yes. You used uh, all of that right, I believe. Good. I got some coaching over the weekend in Toronto. <laughs> I, I brought up the topic at a at a, at a uh, lunch dinner. You were the one who chose this topic, so I'm glad. Uh, you're, yeah, uh, you 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 came up with it, but it was one that I knew I wanted to tackle. It's an interesting one because, um, I mean, slang, right? What is slang? First of all, some people like slang is, in fact, actually Quinn. When I was talking to him uh, about this topic, he actually looked it up. Slang is a, what was it, bastardization of a language? Interesting. Yeah, but I think bastardization has too much of a negative connotation to it. Uh, we're going to get into that a little later. What I wanted to do first, I actually want to go right into the comments because we yeah. got a lot of Facebook comments from people. People, I mean, first of all, it's great that we're getting so much pe- so many people like contributing mm-hmm. to us. Like, it's really cool that we have a lot of support from our friends and our social circle. Um, but my question was specifically, what do you think about slang? And a lot of the comments were very much, these are words I hate. It, yeah. It skewed very much to the negative. So I don't know if there were any comments in particular that struck you, that you want to specifically look at. I mean, a lot of it came out of people just giving examples of ones that they hear and either don't like or don't use. Yes. Um, one that comes up a few times that I actually, we actually looked up at work yesterday with a friend of mine okay. is lit. Lit. Which, I mean, even myself, I kind of guessed meant just like cool or awesome or like good. Generally, yeah. And that's what we got. We, we urban dictionary it, which I find is a great source of this kind of stuff because they usually do have some pretty apt uh, descriptions up there. Mm-hmm. And the example they gave was, you know, oh bro, the party was lit. Like it was a good party. Yeah, it was, uh, it was lit. All right, it was lit. So I think with me, it's less that I don't get them because I think any term heard enough times, you'll eventually figure out the context for. Yes. And a lot of people don't like them or just don't understand them. For me, it's more, where did they come from? That's what's interesting, right? Like even with that little search we did, where did lit come from? I would imagine it comes from, I mean, it's tough to say. Like, honestly, I couldn't even speculate. There's so many different ways. I I think we're probably going to get to etymology and, like, origins a little later. I kind of want to tackle first just the general comments we got. And, again, the first, I want to tackle the first comment that we got first. Ah, please go ahead. And that's Ian, our friend Ian. Mm Mm-hmm. And he says, I hate any slang being used when it's a music artist, song title, or lyrics. So, first example he uses YOLO. We all know what YOLO is. And again, only because it's used so often, the context is explained. And yes. we also know its origin a bit. It's uh, it's it's Drake. 
Is it Drake? Okay, It's good. Drake who uses YOLO. You only live once, YOLO. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was in my first degree at Concordia, we created a faux advising company for the Montreal Rowing Federation. So okay. You know, at Parc Jean Drapeau, they have the Rowing Federation, like yeah, the Rowing yeah, Club. Yeah. We actually had to be... And it was actually kind of real. We had to act as consultants and give suggestions. Mm. Um, our professor actually pitched it to the Canadian Rowing Club, like the Canadian Rowing Committee. It was really cool. We couldn't think of a name, so we used Rolo, R O W L O, after <laughs> YOLO. We had to explain to our professor what that meant or where it came from. We said it was a play on YOLO, and luckily, someone else in the class, was like, it's kind of like Carpe Diem, but a modern version of Carpe Diem, which is like, seize the day, you only live once. Live life to the fullest. And that is a really good way of looking at it because, I, I, again, even the people who seem to not like the terms, and myself being someone who doesn't get a lot of them, there's no dislike. There's just, I think, the confusion of not knowing them. Yes. And to kind of tie into actually the respond to that comment from Paula, of all people. Yes. Uh, agreeing with Ian that slang times itself a little bit. It, it really kind of shows your age. Mm-hmm. Like someone who listens to Drake, a younger generation... Well, no, lit or fam, because I'm assuming he may also be related to those ones. I mean, fam, I don't know if fam comes from Drake, but he definitely uses it in a couple of his songs. So even if it's not from him, it's that generation of music, which is it one is. that I personally don't listen to very much. Yes. So when the term came out of nowhere, I was very lost and confused and took a day or two before I clicked what it was. And she actually said, uh, music should be timeless. So the fact that we're coming up with these weird terms within our music, with these new slangs, these new terms. We're not just dating ourselves, we're dating the music as well. Like if I go in 20 years from now and hear a song where someone refers to their fan being lit, I'm going to laugh at, oh man, remember when we were like 20 something and that was the thing we were saying? Yeah, but that's probably what our parents are saying with songs from their youth. I guess. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm probably going to be playing devil's advocate a lot of the time during this podcast because I I find slang very interesting, and I was a little surprised that we got only negative comments of people like saying words I hate. These are these are things I don't like. Yeah, I'm trying to find anything that was more constructive and less just hate on. Not really. not that's a problem, um, but what I what well what I want to talk about is uh is my friend Jason. Yeah, he he uses it's lit. He talks about it's lit. Yeah, that's one of those I was looking um, at that reminded me. Bay. Mm-hmm. B a b a e. Um, but also one that one that I actually sort of co-opted a lot is uh, when people say vibes after everything they do or flow. Or, you know, so it's like I've never heard vibes. That's vibes? literally this is my five fifty p.m. today on Tuesday the seventeenth. First time I'm hearing the word. Okay, so vibes essentially it's it's sort of a way just to say atmosphere. So it's like oh you know I I um I clean my room today you know productivity vibes it's like I'm I'm are you saying vibes like v i v e s or no, vibes vibes v i v e s oh, okay. maybe I've heard that one before then never mind you Scratch probably have vibes. that's okay. something I use a lot when it's like good vibes good it's synonymous with good feelings I like that one and I feel like I've heard people talk about good vibes as far back as like. Old songs from the seventies and old TV shows. Vibes oh, good vibrations is a beastie. Uh, beastie Beach Boys. Song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like about good vibration. No, it's a Beach Boys song. Although now um, I'd love to see a Beasties Boys. Well, uh, that's Beach not going to happen. R.I.P. M.C.A. I, I'm in a mashup cover band. So oh, you mean someone's going to like use their computer and do it? Not like they're yes. all going to come together. But no, yes, girl talk style. good vibrations. I mean. Obviously, Good Vibration, when the Beach Boys made that song, they probably didn't intend for it to be shortened to Good Vibes, but Mm -hmm. I like Good Vibes. I find that a slang term that I think is going to stick around. And that's what Quinn was saying. Going back to what Quinn was saying is is, is slang is pretty much just... It's... Words start off as slang, and then they just become part of speech. Okay, we're dancing around this too much now, and I'm going to have to bring it up. Yes. Um, In this little uh, chat we have with one of our friends, Mary... Yes. A few things came up, but this is one she brought up that I knew I was going to hopefully get to. Mm-hmm. And that is how it starts as slang and becomes words. So, example, you say the word vibe. To me, that isn't slang. That is a term I, I, I know and I've used and I've heard and is normal English language. But it did start as slang. Mm-hmm. And we can all look at an example, a very famous example of someone who would make up their own terms or expressions. Perhaps the original slang, uh, slang artist. Uh, William Shakespeare. Yeah. He invented so many words mm-hmm. 
Uh, my, my English teacher used to call him Big Bill. Big Bill Shakespeare. Big Bill Shakespeare? Yeah. No, she was a fan of, uh, of William Shakespeare. I mean, say what, you about, say what you will about William Shakespeare because some people are like, oh, he wasn't a real person. He was like a group of people or he, that wasn't his name. I mean, we know that wasn't his name. You know what, though? I don't think that's important, though. It's uh, not important. It's more what he brought or what they, I don't know. What he, let's just pretend William Shakespeare is William Shakespeare. Or what what, he brought, whatever he is or was. I couldn't give you a list of words that he invented. But imagine being like a fancy man in, in 1600s, 1700s London. <laughs> a fancy man. A fancy man. <laughs> a fancy man. In, in 1600s, 1700s London and seeing like these words that you've never heard of that he's just using. And of course, he's you know, you're going to be like, oh, what is this? This is, you know, these, these are words that I don't like. They're new. We, and again, I'm going back to what Quinn said. I'm, I'm referencing a lot because I really like what he said is that in school, I mean, well, first of all, in reality, we recognize that language, the English language, is a consistently evolving entity. But when we learn it academically, we do learn it, and we are presented it. Uh, we are presented it as a stagnant entity. So it's sort of a clash of the stagnant and the continuously evolving. So of course, when our academically charged stagnant view meets this evolving consistently adding new words like derp or vibes uh or you know flow or or even reusing existing words to describe something else flow for example flow we know what flow is like a river flows now in the in the hockey subculture flow is Mm -hmm. to describe really like long nice hair Oh, is it? Yeah, if you have nice flow, it means you got like a good like you know you got your I, hair I would, going down I would your shoulders. Good flow being like good vibes and a good feel to you. No, I mean good flow also is probably something like that. But yeah, in the hockey world, in the hockey subculture, flow is, is nice hair. So you said something a moment ago that kind of sparked me, and I thought you're right. You don't want a list of all the things that Shakespeare's coined. I, however, do. Ah, uh, the power of the internet. Yeah, and a few of these, I mean, I'm not going to read all of them, because some of them even are things I've heard but don't know. Give me some poignant ones. All that glitters is not gold, there you which go. most of us would now know from Stairway to Heaven. Or elbow uh, room. Smash Mouth. Or Smash Mouth. Elbow Room. Yeah. He invented Elbow Room. Uh, what else did I have here? A, uh, Devil Incarnate. Yeah. Again, things I know I've said. Fancy Free. Faint Hearted. Faint Hearted, I say. I mean, Full Circle. The term Full Circle Everyone says full circle. We've come full circle. Heart of gold. Imagine being a fancy man in, in London <laughs> at the time. And it's like, you love this term. Yeah, I like the way I pronounce it too. It's like, imagine <laughs> being a fancy man and being like full circle. What is this? this is garbage. Things have been made whole. I, that's, this is what I say. Mm-hmm. I mean, also think about the 50s. Do I call, like, do people call each other daddy anymore? <laughs> I wish they would. I wish they would. Can we bring yes. that back? Can we, can we call our fans daddy-os? Yo, what up, daddy-os? <laughs> but I feel like that's too gendered. Yeah, we'll figure something better out then. But anyway, daddy-o is definitely one of my favorite terms that I wish would come back. And I've um, Have you ever played the video game L.A. Noir? Yes, yes, I have. Great video game. Very fantastic. Um, but, and, and it was set a few decades ago mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. And whenever you would sort of walk by every now and then, you'd hear like a, a non-playable character, an NPC, say... Gee, I'm going to get good and tight tonight. Meaning drunk. Oh. So, there's always been slang coming in. Even NPC. Uh, yeah. Technology uh, advancements have made the term NPC. Non-player character. Non-playable character. A character that is just the computer. An mm-hmm. AI. Technology advancements have made that a necessary term. And even like a term like YOLO, which some people are probably like, it's, it's, YOLO is probably the first thing that people think of. Yeah, I think, think that's of one slang. of the go-to ones, yeah. And I think of myself using YOLO. I used to use it ironically, but sometimes I actually use it in places where it's appropriate to use. And I use it in a part of speech. That's it. I mean, I, I can't remember if I used it this weekend when I was talking about jumping off of a cliff. We were watching the Amazing Jumping Race. Off a cliff. Okay. We were watching Amazing Race and talking about doing crazy stunts and one of them is jumping off a building or a cliff. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, why not do it? And I, I think I did say you only live once, not YOLO. I use the full terms. Yeah. But I mean, I could have equally used it. Sorry, before we get too far off, I want to give two more from Shakespeare I just found that I'm in love with. Go for it. Um, damn it, I just closed the page. I'm an idiot. Uh, kill with kindness. Something. I mean, we use that. A ton. Like anyone who works retail uses that. Kill him with uh, kindness. And also this one, which I think might be like the greatest compliment ever okay 
Knock, knock. Who's there? So William Shakespeare invented the knock, knock joke. Specifically for Macbeth. Like in the list I'm using, which is, um, I mean, I can, I'll post it on Facebook later if I'm reminded to. Uh, it does reference each of the plays where it's pulled from. Okay. Uh, things That's cool. Yeah, you know, like Best Foot Forward is from uh, King James. And we should definitely get to a point where we post like relevant links. Do a little like, yeah, a little like, wrap up link thing. So William Shakespeare is the father of the knock knock joke. <laughs> But that was a good one too. Really I want one. to bring up another comment. Yes. Uh, from my buddy Pat. Go for it. Pat. Um, my grandma has always referred to her biddies, b i d d i e s. I did see this one, which was a term back in her day for old ladies. She's newfie. Mm-hmm. Knowing that makes hearing the term used in its contemporary incarnation extra funny, because obviously a biddy now, right? I mean, we worked with we worked with a couple guys who used the term "biddy" to describe, you know, an attractive woman. Mm-hmm. So, not only is slang a completely new word like a YOLO or whatever, or lit being, it's also words being used in a contemporary context. It's just repurposing the word. That is it. I mean, we do a lot of slang comes from known language. We're just adapting or reusing. Mm-hmm. Like you said, with flow, flow is a term that has a proper meaning. And again, we've even seen this too where I might say one day the dictionary definition of flow may include good hair. Yeah. As we've seen uh, the dictionaries updating every year, they always put a new word in and it's usually a big show every time because it's something crazy. Our friend Travis uh, was talking to me today and he's mm-hmm. like, the dictionary added the word derp. Yeah, derp was added. I believe the Sim- because of the Simpsons, they added the word meh. Meh, yeah. Oh, uh, meh. Uh, Everyone uses meh. But meh was slang, and I believe it was started by the Simpsons. That's it. Are people complaining about meh? Everyone uses meh. Yeah, we're using it now nonstop. Meh. 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 Even the word, even the prefix, e hyphen, email, you know, I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were going so strong and just, I was, what? I completely lost all momentum <laughs> that I had. But you know what I mean? E dash. Was I mean, not you see it like in e business or e cards or e commerce, e, e, uh, e invitations or what? Uh, no, thank you for saving me there. <laughs> there you go. Well, I couldn't think of it either. I was like, "Fuck, he's right." What else is there? I know there's more. Uh, I um, guess. I guess the side note of the e would also be the, the, the letter i that Apple's kind of adopted. Yes, iPod, I, iPad, iPod, iTunes. I, exactly. I, I mean, and even, now I robot. Oh yeah, Will Smith movie. But I think that's i comma robot. I don't. Am I not oh, mistaken? You might be, I don't know. And I don't really care enough to check. <laughs> Actually, a decent movie. I kind of like it. Um, uh, but more importantly, though, is now how even now because Apple has adopted this I as a prefix, other industries and other companies. So if a company is going to make a lamp that is also a dock for your iPhone, yes. they're going to call it the I lamp. Yes. I mean, I home is a brand I own products from. That make speakers and clocks and charging uh, devices yeah. for iPhones. Yes. No relation. They just wanted to make sure people knew it. I need to give a shout out to Nick again because once again, I think he has the comment of the <laughs> of the week. Yes. Can you guys make fetch happen? It's like slang from England. I do like it, and the only place I can think of fetch is for some reason it makes me think of um, Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Exactly. I think that's exactly <laughs> where he was going. So you're fine. Also, one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm gonna say it right there. It's a fun movie. It's a great movie. It's a fun movie. Mean Girls. I mean, it's back when Lindsay Lohan... Rachel McAdams? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's just a solid movie for it anybody. Is. Some people take it as a chick flick. I disagree. I think it's just a fun movie to watch. I mean, we can debate whether it's a chick flick or not. I don't think it's relevant. I and of course, you movie. have to watch it on October... October 9th, is it? Is it October 9th? I think it's October 9th. You have to watch it on October 9th. Well, I might be busy October 9th. Oh, shit. <laughs> Well, that's an, an even better reason to have my, my wedding date, just FYI. <laughs> what? Oh, man, I totally forgot about that shit. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Even better. <laughs> I'm using that in my speech. Dude, go for it. I approve. Um, but another uh, but thing... But yes, nope. Nick, I promise we'll make fetch happen. We'll find a way. If, if Waxman have any power over the English language in the future, fetch. I'm an English major. I'm on my way to become like an English grandmaster, I believe, is what is, is the next step for me. And I like decide how English works. I did notice how it works, but I approve. We're going to create a new verb today. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, actually, really conveniently placed segue, though, thanks to Nick, is podcasters inventing words. Yeah. Have you ever heard the term freebooting? Freebooting? I have not. 
Okay, not super widely spread. It is getting there from what I can feel. And this again goes back to another podcast I just mentioned. Um, Hello Internet with CGP Grey and Brady Heron. Okay. Brady coined the term in basically piracy but not explicit. So the example he would give is if someone were to take a video off YouTube and then post it on Facebook without actually tagging or linking the original, just basically re-uploading it. Yes. To steal the views and get credit off it, this would be called freebooting. Okay. And the term picked up. I mean, other YouTubers get interviewed uh, by, like, the New York Times or other uh, websites or, like, BuzzFeed. Yes. And they refer to the act of freebooting someone stealing your content and re-uploading it. Uh, another YouTube channel I love, uh, Kurtzegag. I can never pronounce that fucking right. Do you know who I'm talking about, though? Nope. Okay, uh, but if you look them up now, it's maybe rebranded to call it. It's In a Nutshell, but their old title was In a Nutshell in German, which was Kurtzegag. Kurtzegag? I'm uh, not going to bother trying anymore. And they did a video on how Facebook reboots videos. They use the term because it had become common enough that it was able to use. And I just feel like it's, again, we're also in a culture now where so many outlets are constantly, not just music, but TV, movies, podcasts, yeah. YouTube, terms come up and get picked up. I mean, you've heard me at work say it. When I'm getting ready to go on lunch or come back from work and I'm like dropping off some of my, my stuff, I'm degubbing. Yes, I've used degubbing also. And we both used it. Um, degubbing, for what it's worth, is to rid yourself of everything you are holding. Yeah, just ditch your stuff. Ditch what you don't need. If you're coming home from work and tossing down your bag and your shoes and this, your watch, you're degubbing. This is really convenient because the the term degubbing comes from uh, a member of the Rooster Teeth or Achievement Hunter clan um, who happens to be British. Yeah. So the influence of different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our friend Kevin who is French. From France. Yes. And what he was saying on Facebook, and he actually sent me a link of like 15 other French slang words, which are fantastic. Like, oh, I didn't see all of them. Slang, he sent me one on, he sent me it on, uh, on Facebook Messenger. Oh, okay. Um, but what he says, Thanks, I want to read his Facebook comments and I'll, uh, he's coming over later, so we'll, we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, in France, the slang is called the Verlain, which pretty much means to say some words in French backwards. For example, font, F O N D, is donf, D-O-N-F. To me, that just sounds crazy, but it clearly works. They have a term for it even. In France, it probably makes sense. That's in it. In France, that's, that's, the, that's the, the lit, the woke thing to do. <laughs> um, uh, and I mean, that also goes back, again, we're going back to British culture. I mean, yep. uh, Cockney, where they often use rhyming words instead of the actual word. Yeah. Uh, one of the more hey, popular hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, there you go. But I mean, even just like I've heard, um, I think it's in Train Spotting they reference this one, uh, uh, referring to stairs as apples and pears. Apples and pears. Just um, the rhymes. And you just, you hang out with enough people who use a Cockney accent and use Cockney terminology. I mean, it makes sense to you. Even looking at Gavin, where he's like, you mingy little bump, or, or <laughs> things like that. Like, is that slight? And even, even in our workplace. Yeah. In our workplace, we have, uh, some of the times I communicate with people I work with going, Blanche, or you know, just using random one syllable words that may or may not actually be words, or Joe Beef, Joe Beef. Like, is that slang, or is that just an inside joke? I think that might be a little more us being silly and inside jokiness. That too. If it evolves into something, uh, I believe a term we often use in my store referring to um, things that are not proper or just a little shady is jank. Yes, jank. To that point, is probably slang. That I definitely would say slang. And jank. again, I've heard it in other places. I've used it. I, even Paula started using it here even and there, which refers to like, you know, janky situations at work where something doesn't seem right. On another, like, exactly on that segue, um, our friend Danny mm -hmm. says, Obvi, perf, and totes can all use a punch to the face in the sense of shortening words. So we also shorten words at work where we say custies instead of customers. Yeah, custies. I actually have no problem with shortening words i know so this is what i know from experience because i do occasionally say things where i'll like i'll end this i'll end a word short yes. like ob. Um, i don't use that one i can't even exact ones i've used paula hates those she I, hates them to the point where like, i have said things like yeah to to no. late <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, I'll like i'll pause wide eyes and finish it like i was going to the whole time what are you talking about i wasn't pausing weirdly but i feel like custies where you're kind of cutening a little bit kind of works I think that kind of breaks the mold a little bit. I say obvi. I say yeah. ob I say perf. And I say totes, my goats, or totes. Totes, my goats is a good one. I like that one. Yeah, but honestly, um, 
Like, when it comes to shortening words, I think technology plays a big role in that as well. Yeah. In the sense that we are now in an era where time is, I guess, a little more of the essence than it usually is. I mean, I think I see where you're going with this one, with, like, uh, slang speak in text almost. Mm Mm-hmm. I I think it's just laziness. It's just it's simplicity. It's laziness and simplicity, but at the same time, that doesn't make it bad. No, no, no I'm not insulting it. I just okay. don't think it's a matter of we don't have enough time to write out full words. But I think it does tie back in a little more than we talked about the digital age. Remember when your cell phone was the numbers one through nine and then the zero star in the pound? Oh, uh, what was it called? It was like a T9. T9, I think was the term T9. Used. Yeah, was my nicely... first phone was like a Nokia something and I had to like tap the letter... But it was smart T9, so like it sort of knew something. Yeah, that was. I never got the hang of that one where you could, like, just hit, if you were trying to write home, you just hit the four numbers in a row that would spell at home, and it would try to figure it out by guessing. I always used it if you wanted the, like, the M, you have to tap the whatever yes. number two times or three times. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, if I had it in front of me, I could probably be more descriptive. But that was a time where if you could make things shorter to type, it was easier for you. Yes. So if you wanted to get across, you were laughing. That's where I think LOL came from. LOL, LOL, was just because on a T9 keyboard, writing three letters was way easier than typing out a whole sentence. And I feel like that's where a lot of this, I think that kind of goes back to elite speak is the term they'll use for it often. Elite this... speak is, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Elite speak mm-hmm. is a great example. I mean, like, uh, lead hacksaw. Remember that? <laughs> or, or even like on Xbox One, three, Live. Three, seven. <laughs> yeah, on Xbox Live, the gamer tags that have oh, numbers in them, and but you read them as letters because at this point, because we're nerds, we know that these are part of speech. Yeah. I feel like we need to go to Mary's text at this point. Yeah. Because so... Mary brings up a great point and a great way to sort of not not I guess summarize because our friend George. Our friend George, um, I want to get to his post on Facebook because mm-hmm. it's a great way. I think I don't know if that's what inspired Mary to to write or, or to send us what she what she did. Mm-hmm. But um, pretty much what George said, it's not loading up right now. But he sort of said, "I don't know where on fleek comes from," and I will agree. No I, idea. I had no idea. But what George says, if I find out, my brain would shrink from stupidity. But we actually got a text message, and first of all, we support. Any way that you reach out to us. Mm-hmm. Text, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. LinkedIn <laughs> especially. If you, uh, or, or just word of mouth. Yeah. No, we see a lot of our friends in, in passing and they talk to us about the podcast. They want to get involved with it. They want to learn more about it. Maybe uh, you like phone, call us from like a, a pay phone and be like, hey, uh, I got something for the podcast. You know, I got a... Uh, deep throat. Like a deep throat type I, thing. As long as we're for deep throat joke or a smoking man joke, I was good with that one. Yes, um, but Mary brings up a great point. Actually, one that I was hoping to see from other people is, uh, do you want to read it? Yeah, so basically, I'll summarize this. It's really uh, verbose and really well written. Yes. But essentially how a lot of slang comes from black culture. And I mean, we may have touched on this a bit with songs like rap music being the source. YOLO. Um, and On Fleek especially. On Fleek does yeah. come from black culture. And she's linked us to an article of the history of the term On Fleek and how it started as a term in black culture was picked up by the media and white culture kind of adopted it and made it into its own thing. The word is co-opted. It's co-opted. Is, That's the yes, thing. Co-opted is the right word. Where the majority, the, the culture in power takes something from the culture that's not in power and either makes it their own or pokes fun at it, which is what on fleek has definitely become. Um, another term I use is throwing shade. Yeah. Throwing shade. If, if you don't know where throwing shade comes from, the term throwing shade, it comes from, first of all, it comes from a long time ago, long before, you know, uh, for example, I mean, RuPaul's Drag Race is probably the best place. It does really? come from drag queen culture. Really? Yeah. Throwing shade comes from black and Latino uh, drag queen culture, but, but like from the 80s. If I may, where, I, I honestly thought uh, it, it came from like a uh, Magic the Gathering background or an old RPG background. Nope. Throwing Shade seems like a really awesome uh, Dungeons and Dragons spell to me. Throwing sh- yeah, <laughs> throwing Shade is essentially insulting somebody. Huh. It is. Okay. Um, so when black and Latino drag queens would, I guess, or, or they would vogue at each other and sort of face off. And I, I apologize completely if I'm, I'm misremembering. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, Paris is burning. Is a great documentary that I intend to watch in full at some point. 
but I watched the part of it that did talk about uh, the term throwing shade is it comes from this marginalized subculture and was then, you know, it sort of was, it was like that. Yeah. You're throwing shade because you are silently insulting the person you're going up against. Hmm. And you are saying things that they are not as their makeup is not as good as yours or their hair is not as good as yours or et cetera, et cetera. That's throwing shade. Spilling tea is probably similar. Spilling tea. That, um, hey, okay, I, I'll admit, I've heard throwing shade. I kind of vaguely knew it, it was insulting somebody. I didn't know what their culture was. But yeah. spilling tea, I am completely baffled by this one. Uh, my what? understanding is that spilling tea is a lot of like. Is it just a British version? Gossip. Yes. Yeah, okay. Tea. <laughs> spilling tea might be a British. I don't know a lot about. But what Mary essentially says is to keep in mind these new parts of slang, these new parts of speech that sort of suddenly come up. And yes, it's very easy to make fun of them. It's very easy to hate on them. But let's not forget where they originally come from. They originally come from a lot of them, not all of them necessarily, but a lot of them come from these marginalized subcultures, whether it's just African-American people in general, whether it's the African-American slash Latino drag queen culture. Very, very specific subculture. Very specific, but, but throwing shade, I know it comes from that. Like I, I said, no idea. Paris is Burning, great documentary. Um, I've only seen a part of it. I do intend to watch the rest of it at some point. What is it? I haven't heard of this. I'm so behind all these things all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, but but I think what Mary was saying is just not to forget. It's very easy to, to encounter something new, right, in our culture. And because, like what Quinn said, because we are presented with a view of language that is stagnant and unmoving... To immediately treat anything new as bad or as unwelcome. Let's not forget where these terms necessarily come from. And let's not downplay the reasoning for why these terms come up. And and where they come. You know, white people, and I'm, I don't want to get on a soapbox here. I don't want to, like, I'm. that's not my place as a, as a, again, as a and white And I feel like even man, that going a little bit there, the whole getting on a soapbox thing is a... Yes. It that is, is kind of an expression that's kind of grown from way back when. I mean, those are things. Like, even our friend Justin says, like, to be honest, uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, those are little used as a crutch. Mm-hmm. But let's not forget the origin of these terms. That they they come from a subculture, or a lot of them do, come from a subculture. Probably turned also lit. Flow, probably not so much. I just, I just tweeted out hashtag turns recently. That's Strange. not a. That's not a bad thing. I don't know what it means. Is it getting drunk? Is it being drunk? Like... Is getting drunk or oh. getting like having a crazy party? So I was right using it in the context. Yes. Good so to know. key, major key. Yes, major key. Um, but let's not forget where those terms come from because if we lose sight of that and we just hate on it blindly because of this, because of that. But <laughs> let's not forget the origins of these words and let's not. I don't want to say I. I don't want to be that guy, but I, let's not disrespect why these words came about in the first place. Is it, my thought, and that's what I think what Mary was trying to say. Also, don't forget, don't forget the origin of these terms. It's very easy to hate on them because they're new. They're used by these young people that that people of our age group are like. We're not them, but we're also not our parents. We're sort of in the middle, and it's kind of cool to hate on like new things, but it's also kind of not cool. That's it. It's, it's good to have an opinion. I mean, like, I'll look at certain terms like lit and realize I'll probably never use it except sarcastically to make a joke and make myself look old. And that's okay. Like, I was out with my cousins the other day for a drink at this really, really dirty bar. But I think I should just Snapchat with the girl in the mechanical bolt. Yes, I do yeah. remember that. Was Ooh. that uh, Shea, uh, Shea, Shea, Shea? No, actually a different one. It used to be Maz Bar, now with Jersey Saloon. Don't know it. I mean, literally the waitresses were wearing denim underwear and plaid uh, bikini tops. That was pretty much their oh, that's fun. dress code. Eh, <laughs> a little too much. I, I mean, I, I like a girl in scantily clad, but this was like skeezy. Too much. <laughs> but I, I digress. Sitting with my cousins who are uh, the, the two youngest ones, much younger than me. I mean, I think we're looking at six and eight years younger than me, if I'm not mistaken now. But they'll, you know, use terms like I'll use terms like lit and fam with them. And they think it's funny that I'll look at Drew who's older using these terms that us young people use. And we actually discussed a little bit and kind of went on the, like, what do these mean? Which ones do you really use? Do you really know what they mean? And just, there was a nice divide of myself 
Paula and the eldest of the three sisters, uh, Emily, not really like on the same, you know, we thought we knew, but we weren't sure on some of them. We actually were corrected on a few. Yes. Whereas the two younger sisters and my younger brother, Sam, and his girlfriend knew what they were a little better. And it just goes to show that, again, I think it, uh, it is a bit of a generational thing, I think. It is, absolutely. Slang is the quickest way that people of our age group lose touch with, I guess, what's cool and what's, 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 I'm already going to say, what's hip, which no one uses anymore. Yeah, um, that's very old slang. Yeah. I mean, hey, hey. Well, I mean, like, think about it. words like rad and righteous and gnarly. We don't use those anymore. I use them ironically now because they're old and they're they're not. They're not. I got the sign to give Drew another beer. Sorry, I was uh, trying to do it without him cutting him off, but it happened. Nah, I just I brought it up. I could have done it like stylistically and like sur- surreptitiously, but I I chose to bring it up. But uh, yeah, we. We are so obsessed with what's in, and then when you get to 25, which is pretty much where we're both at, like, yeah, yeah. give or take a year, we get to the point where it's cool to hate on these young people, these 16, 15-year-olds, mm-hmm. who, who are the people who really, I guess, dictate what's interesting and what's new and what's what's awesome in our lives. But at the same time, we're using terms, ironically, like I said, I use the term righteous. <laughs> ironically because oh look no one uses that term anymore i'm going to use it because it's funny and it's interesting and it makes people laugh mm-hmm. so slang is really interesting and, and again uh, i'm going to quote mary again here i uh, pull it up yeah go ahead yeah i'm going to pull it up real quick and i'm going to talk beep beep do 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 slang is what keeps a language alive and evolving and we, that's really it we as a as a language as whether it's english i'm sure I don't speak Mandarin, but I'm sure they have slang that evolves. They have this and they have that. We're not the only language that has slang. Mm -hmm. Slang is a part of what makes a language a language. I'm regretting not pulling up. I know Japan has a few interesting terms like that where Mm -hmm. the slang is created because the kanji or the actual symbols used to determine a word look similar or look like things. Uh, I believe they actually have a holiday in Japan called Singles Day. It's essentially God, I wouldn't it, know. <laughs> oh, good one. Uh, hey. It's it's kind of like an anti Valentine's Day, and it's actually one of the biggest shopping days online. Really? In Japan. Like it is an event. They have shows. They have events. I think last year they were showing off. Liam Neeson showed up to celebrate part of it as part of like a an event. I mean, who else would? I mean, that's but, the the but king Liam of Neeson. But the whole thing is because the kanji for single also looks like the kanji for whatever you know the the number was that made this date. And they are so they chose that day to be Singles Day, and now it's a holiday there. So even like in advance of how much slang can affect culture, they now have a shopping day on par with our Black Friday, if not more, that came from what could consider technically be slang. Yeah, I think when people think of slang, they automatically go to the negative. Mm-hmm. And I get it. It's very easy to think, oh, YOLO, that's stupid. But let's not forget that the words that we use in our everyday life, knock, knock, who's there? Full circle. Coming full circle. <laughs> full circle. <laughs> that's it. Hey. It's, that is slang. That started out as a word that... Someone invented. Term, exactly. A word or a term used to describe something that was originally a thing, but had not been described in that way before. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that slang is what evolves the English science. If we were still going around calling each other daddy o, <laughs> that would be weird. Hey, you daddy o's want to go watch the basketball game tonight? Want to go see them put the round old ball hey, in the hoops? You see, you see, you see the, 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 the cats take, and the chicks uh, out there. Take three they, fingers of whiskey. Three fingers of whiskey. Hey, listen, the cats and the chicks out there, they want to they wanna go to... Come back to my dirigible and show you a mighty fun time. Dirigible. <laughs> <laughs> Tabernacle. <laughs> but we're just we're just being really stupid now. Let's not forget, and I don't want to be like this guy on uh, like, hey, listen, you guys are all stupid. And I'm we're smart. Not, we're not preaching. We're sharing we're an not educated preaching. opinion. Yes, it's very much. I absolutely agree. There are definitely some terms in the English language I look at and I'm like, that's really fucking stupid. But it's important to keep in mind that terms that we use every day. We're not around maybe 30 years ago, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, 10 years ago. 
No, we, we live in a culture, we live in a world where the language is evolving, how things change. In 20 years, no one will use the term fam, but lit might be as common as cool or in twenty In 20 years, fam will be something that, like your your dad uses. Like, hey, like like us as dads, if we have kids. <laughs> if we have kids. If like, and one, if and one. Yo, what up fam? Dad, no one uses that anymore. Yo, don't be a fuck boy. <laughs> Dad, shut up! I'm <laughs> uh, sorry, we couldn't get through a slang podcast without using "fuck boy." This "fuck boy." I, we have friends I know who are definitely sitting here listening, and this is the point where they spit out their drink. <laughs> Warning! At, at about the one hour mark, uh, put down your drink and put down your cornflakes. Um, what? <laughs> hey, oh, don't man. be a fuck boy, son. Don't be a. F- you know, your mother and I, back in the day, we were a bunch of fuckboys. Me, me, and my, me and my friends, we were fuckboys all the time, you know? That reminds Dad, me. stop. No that one reminds, used those. That reminds me of, it was an animation online someone did where it was, like, making fun of kids today. And it was, like, the mom and dad in the future who were, like, not scantily clad, but wearing, like, a midriff shirt and, like, a v-neck shirt with his tattoo showing. Taking their daughter to a party and the daughter's wearing literally, like, tape over her nipples and a thong. Because, oh like, just, that's the acceptable thing to wear nowadays. But we're all like, whoa, that's so much skin to reveal. The same way your parents look at, you know, like, a girl today wearing, like, short a short skirt and, like, half a top. And, like, that's way yes. too little. And we're like, yeah, it's revealing, but it's still covering everything in casual. Like, we defend it because it's our modern. I, it's that's like it's... our language. We have our language. We accept. We defend. I still occasionally say lol out loud in conversations. Yeah, people it's do. a weird thing to do, and I've been made fun of for doing it. And I'll continue to do it, most likely. I think we should wrap up at a certain point, just t- t- to to finish up. Yes. Language, much like the rest of our society, be it fashion, be it entertainment, be it technology, is evolving. Yeah. And we can choose to be, like, super, you know, turn our backs to it and, you know, stomp our feet. Or we can just say, this is just how the world was at this point in time. And that's it. What sticks will stick, and in years from now, it'll be a term we, it's a little more commonly used. Uh, in a few months from now, or whenever it happens, I think maybe close to the holidays when the Oxford English Dictionary adds a new word and call, or chooses a word of the year. Yeah. I think it was YOLO last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that would not surprise me. I really think it was. That would not surprise me. And um, I mean, whatever that term be, whether it be one that does stick, one that we totally made a mistake on and didn't call right, we'll have to wait and see. But just know, when you hear that new crazy hipster slang... Don't dismiss it right away. That's it. It might not be for you. It might not be the term you're going to add to your vocabulary. And that's okay. Like, I like key. I think key is a great key one. Key is a great... I use key it a does, lot. And that's it. I, I will admit, the other day, playing games online, someone made a comment about getting a good score and doing this part of the level right, and I was like, that's key. key it was just, it yeah. naturally hit me. I was like, that's the right I way to start I use key. That. I use vibes so much. I like um, vibes. I don't use it enough. Vibes is a good one. Should, is this the part where we say how to reach us on social media? Yes. Okay. Okay, well... I'll let you start for once. I we're going to wrap it up here because we're over slightly over the hour mark. But if you want to keep this conversation going, you can always reach me uh, at uh, on, on Twitter at, so the at symbol, then the word at, Ryan W. I still love that one, but you got to admit it is tough to tell people that. It's tough to explain it. That's it. Funny, I noticed the other day I went to go tag you on Twitter, and someone else I have on Twitter, I forget who, I'll have to double check now, also has the at AT their name. It's cool. It's very, it's very, it's, uh, it's, one it's very like. lit. It is, it is quite, it is quite yeah. key these days. So you can good reach Twitter Drew handle. on Twitter at Boxless Thought. Yes. And uh, that's also my Instagram tag, as I believe yours is also your Instagram tag. At Ryan W is my Instagram. It's also my Snapchat. Whereas you... my Snapchat is just Boxless. I should have to that though, just to make it all the same. Uh, on Facebook, Ryan Waxman. Drew Shulman. Drew Shulman. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah. very simple. Uh, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, those of you who gave us feedback, who helped us grow yes. and make this podcast better. We apologize. We could not read your comments. Uh, we, you know, but please keep leaving us comments. We do read all of them. We do. We always make sure to go through them all of them. Read all go, of go them. Go through them all of them. I go can through words. them all of them. Uh, do I need to leave off with a jingle here? Uh, before that, I do want to add one more shout out real quick. Go for it. Uh, a thank you to uh, Andrea or at Airy Smiles, uh, Air I Smile. Um, she is an artist who works for Rooster Teeth on yes. the famous anime Ruby. 
Yes, um, thank you. She actually is, if you've checked my Twitter avatar, she's the artist behind that. And we'll be doing a new piece for Ryan as well as a, uh, as a gift for me to him. And that will actually, if it's not up by the time this episode goes up, will be our new logo. Yes. So if you're looking at the lovely new logo that is not the weird space tiger thing, and you see a really cool anime drawing, you can thank at Air I Smile. Yes, thank you so much, Andrea. I also want to give shout-outs to Lil and Paula for hashtagging I'm fine. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I did not think anybody would. I, I, I re-listened to the episode today for an editing run-through, and I, I remember I saw that. I was like, oh, that explains those tweets. I was so confused. I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. Oh, I did not think anybody would, um, but Lil, Paula... Thank you both. I do appreciate it, and I knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> uh, do I jingle now? Uh, yeah, why don't you jingle us out of here? Boop, 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 do, do. Speaking of which... <laughs>